Research in Mongolia re relates to a number of themes that are core within the Department of Archaeology. And one of those themes is migration. And we're keen to understand how it is that uh, Homo sapiens moved out of Africa and began to move beyond Africa and to disperse and migrate and ultimately to come to inhabit the entire planet. And Mongolia really sits at a critical junction for us to be able to understand how populations moved into more northern environments, how they adapted to uh, very challenging circumstances in some, um, in some parts of the world, and uh, how they then dispersed further beyond that into places like the New World. What this project's trying to help contribute is uh, looking at different landscapes that have been traditionally investigated. So looking at more caves, which are quite sparse throughout Mongolia, but there are a lot of them, as Mongolia is quite a large place. And also uh, lake margins, which uh, would have been sort of quite vital to the earliest people, as it would have provided both food and, and hopefully water, although some of them are quite salty. but the water would have been especially important for these people, especially in the southern arid regions of Mongolia. Places like Mongolia have thought to have actually been not so important archaeologically. And that's because Mongolia is in a northern climate, so it would have experienced glaciations, for example. And then it has vast deserts like the Gobi Desert. And so archaeologists have assumed that places like this are inhospitable uh, and they, they don't have archaeological sites. And because they're so inhospitable, archaeologists have even themselves avoided places like this. Uh, it's located in quite like an interesting geographic space. It's bounded by the uh, Siberian permafrost to the north and on the south it's got this large arid region surrounded by deserts. Um, and those two parts are kind of constantly in a battle with one, one another and uh, as well as that it's basically located on these giant uh, tectonic fault lines. So it seems like the, the earth is constantly a battle with Mongolia. Um, and this makes it interesting archaeologically because uh, it's such a fragile region uh, environmentally. So looking at people's occupation over time and how they've interacted with the environment and uh, whether there's a large continuity there or sort of a large amount of uh, repopulation or deaths in the past uh, makes it an interesting question or interesting region to look at. <laughs> In the past, Mongolia was really sitting at a critical point in the, what, we, what we in archaeology call the old world. So we, we really want to try and understand Mongolia much better. We want to understand how people came to occupy this really unique and in some ways very challenging environment. So we're interested in when did people get to Mongolia? Um, how did they adapt to this landscape? How did they uh, kind of survive these multiple periods of climate change or not? Maybe Mongolia emptied out at certain points. And then subsequently, how did these human societies develop and adapt and change to the point where eventually we get these great empires, the Xiongnu Empire, the Mongol Empire? 
So we're interested in this kind of long-term history of a really fascinating and critical part of, of the world. Well, we, we know that there are plentiful archaeological sites in Mongolia. Uh, however, there are virtually no fossils, no fossils of modern humans. <clears throat> There's only one, and that fossil uh, is a modern human that dates to about 34,000 years ago. It's associated with uh, particular stone tool types, uh, and these stone tool types are called the <clears throat> initial Upper Paleolithic, and we think that's the signpost of the migrations of modern humans across Mongolia. Uh, however, large chunks of Mongolia have not been surveyed, and our goal is to try to fill in a lot of the geographic gaps. We collected a lot of stone tools so that we can look at the, uh, the technology and the methods that they were using, uh, but we also collected a lot of bone samples as this can give us both dates and kind of general information about the climate and, and the diets of these animals to create kind of an ecological model. Um, and we also took a lot of sediment samples and, and these can also be used to date but also give us general uh, environmental information such as uh, the processes that were happening like a lot of wind erosion for example or uh, like sediment buildup. In Mongolia, uh, the samples are all stored inside the National Museum and then uh, we get the permits to export them for scientific studies and then they'll be sent here or to the uh, institute that will analyze them and then here we'll bring them into our lab and look at, their, uh, at the isotopes, for example, or uh, look at the fauna bones to find out what kind of species they are using zooms. This is the point at which field archaeology meets more scientific-based approaches in archaeology. In the context of projects such as the Mongolian Fieldwork Project, we're looking at materials that allow us to build up on-site environmental records that we can associate with human behavior and understand a little bit more about their adaptations in the past and how they might have changed these adaptations in relation to things like climate change. This is also complemented by analysis of sediments, where we can do stabilized step analysis on these sediments to see what vegetation is going into these um, soils in the past. Um, and if we can well date these sequences, we can get really nice records of paleoenvironmental change through time, how the vegetation changed and how things like aridity might have changed as well. And combining all of these different sort of elements, we can look at how the environmental conditions of the broader landscape then influenced animals as well as humans, which is ultimately the thing we're most trying to get at. We had people on the team from Mongolia, from Russia, from Germany, from Spain, uh, from Australia, and, uh, and, and the UK as well. well. The local people are extremely important to us. Uh, they have all the local knowledge, so they understand the terrain. They know oftentimes where archaeological sites are. And so it's very important for us to work with local people, but also, of course, uh, the people of Mongolia in, in, in authority. So, so we team up with Mongolian archaeologists themselves and we work together very closely in the field uh, and we also exchange ideas of course but we also hope that uh, uh, Mongolian archaeologists come here to Germany as well in, in exchange of ideas and expertise. They provided us kind of with a lot of the logistics and the permits but also kind of a general knowledge of Mongolian um, archaeology and, and being able to know the landscapes.
the Mongolia is, you know, one of the the west uh, the countries with uh, the west territory and then rich cultural heritage and very scarce population, small population. So uh, when uh, the Mongolian uh, local archaeologists work in, in the country, so it's a big challenge to uh, the organize the logistics and so and also the weather is very harsh depends on which area of the Mongolia. So it's also the big challenge for both a national and the international team uh, who is doing their archaeological work in Mongolia. There are uh, the number of the archaeological, international archaeological projects are increasing year by year now. And good thing for the international projects in so many young archaeologists and students is learning, you know, the new methods and new technology from the international researchers and international institutions also. They are sharing the knowledge and, and the experience. When we are coming up with some of our, our results and findings, we really are exploring the ways in which humans use their environments through time. We're keen to understand how humans responded to climate change, um, whether they stayed in regions that became more difficult when climate was altered, whether they left those regions. And Mongolia is critical because when climates changed, they had a really significant impact on Mongolia. You have lakes that are coming and going. You have um, very, very cold periods uh, with ice building up and very significant climate impacts when the climate changes. Mongolia is really not very well known. It, there are a lot of uh, geographic gaps. So our goal is to survey and to try to find archeological sites and hopefully even fossils. It's a key part of the world to be working in to understand how our species has through time responded to climate change. Thank you.